Hello everybody, Josh Silek here with Physical Digital, and this is the third video in a series that I'm creating for people who are more interested in designing without having to pay all of those fees to create AI art locally on their own computer using their own hardware to their heart's content. So if you haven't seen my first two videos, just go check out my YouTube. Uh, it looks like this. Bam! Physical Digital. And I've got number one right here, making beautiful AI art you will love. And number two, um, which is covering sources, you know, like, so maybe you want to run automatic 1111 and stable diffusion. Most of the, what I'm going to be talking about is using stable diffusion. But let's go over some, uh, let's start number three. And number three is where it really gets fun. So by the time you're watching this, you've already gone and downloaded yourself a uh, stable diffusion. You have uh, now know where to get the, a model and if you forgot let me show you where that is. You would have come over to say Civit AI and looked at models right here, models, and sourced yourself a model and a style that you enjoy. Now I'm not talking about making a full NFT collection yet, although I will cover that at some point. We're talking about onesies, twosies, creating that first layer. Now how you create and what you do with that first layer to make it more unique and your own after uh, to really uh, get that cop the to tie it in and get that copyright part of it so that it's not just uh, the AI just spitting it out. Although some of these are beautiful. Like we can look at the um, this mysterious SDXL, very, very nice, uh, Zavi, and this kind of thing. These are different models that you can download. Uh, if you wanted to know how to tie those models in, check out my second video and you can see that. But today what we're going to be going over is prompts. So let's see where do you source prompts? What are positive prompts and negative prompts? And then how do you work with that? So let's just give you a, a, a kind of an example here about prompts. Here we are over at mage.space forward slash explore. Mage.space is a really neat site. You can create art on here, but you can also explore different art. And so we're going to just pick something here and we'll show you why we came to this site. So let's just go to whatever grabs our eye this one right here. So we can see here that it's a portrait photo of transparent uh, bracket scorpion. Remember the brackets emphasizes kind of like, is like a plus one. Hey, you really want to emphasize more on this particular thing. You could even do multiple sets of brackets to really drive in the point that you want to get more of that. And then um, we've got a uh, mech. Uh, you can see where they did light bulk uh, in a double bracket here, intricate photograph. Um, this was using a stable diffusion model with a dream uh, dream shaper XL. I'll see if I can make this bigger for you. Dream shaper XL. They used a guidance scale of seven. Um, here's the dimensions. Now the dimensions do make a difference. If you don't have, uh, if you have smaller dimensions, there's not as much for uh, the the generation to kind of work with, enough pixels to work with. So you're going to get a different result with different pictures, even with the same prompts. Um, and so uh, then we've got the seed here that they used, the amount of steps, which scheduler they used, which was Euler in this particular instance. And then um, we can go show more and they had no negative prompts. All right. So that is one example. Now you can start uh, getting your own kind of repertoire. You can mix and match uh, kind of different things depending on what you're going for. In this, uh, in, in this ex uh, example, it didn't really say what the background was, right? There, it didn't say time of day. It could have been elaborated on. In this case, not saying it left it over open to say more uh, variation. We have another one here where they are using uh, what close up orbital space city surrounding inhabited planet, hard science fiction, high resolution. We've got the uh, the dimensions which we can see are different here. So that's narrower and taller. A higher guidance scale. So remember the last one we saw was a guidance scale of seven. This one's a 12 and a half. So it's going to want to stick to the, your prompt more closely, both positive and negative prompts more closely. We've got the seed steps and it uses a different schedule, the DPMM uh, DPM Keras. 
and we can look here at the show negative prompts and we do have negative prompts in this case it didn't want anime it didn't want cgi it didn't want too many planets some of these things when you're creating prompts and you're trying to, to draft your uh, or manifest what your vision is sometimes what you're going to do is you're going to do small changes like i said in previous videos and add negative prompts to take out the things that you don't want to finally get to the things that you do want it takes time all right so mage.space is one of those sites let's look at another one here this is another site that uh, one can use it's called lexica uh, lexica.art uh, you can also generate from lexica uh, you've got some uh, dis uh, choices here in terms of dimensions and they're using their own uh, aperture version 3.5 and uh, we can check out their site here so here is a very kind of a, a, a longer prompt and then we've got a, a lexica aperture 3.5 is what they use here's the dimensions they used and now you're not you might not necessarily if you're using stable diffusion for this if you're not using their particular app uh, their model you're not going to get the same results you're going to get something different and that's fine um, because sometimes you don't want to just copy uh, exactly what somebody else's style is you might want to use something different so we can look here at this one in particular and we've got something here but I like surfing these sites because what it can do is it can give you an idea about what kind of things are possible and uh, there's a lot of variation right so we can see that there's some variation here and you can even get some new prompt ideas that you hadn't thought about before like oh geez um you know this if i was just to look at this one here intricate artwork masterpiece okay well what happens if i use that that uh, prompt in something that i'm working on now how does that change things right how does ultra high quality model change things uh, ultra detail, listic art, uh, gorgeous face, you know, all of these kind of contribute together in a way to make uh, this particular image a reality. Okay, so here we are over at civet.ai. I had clicked images and then just looked below to images, right? I'll just go back and I'll show you Civit AI. I went to images and we've got a bunch of different types of images here. Let's just pick one at random that, uh, that kind of sticks out this one sticks out pretty good this one's uh pretty cool and we're gonna look here and we've got look at this uh a, a massive uh prompt it even allows us uh that we can copy the prompt right from here and drag it into our window for stable diffusion if we wanted to and we've got uh, a really great negative prompt I love long negative prompts like this because it does allow you to see um, a, a lot of these you can use with other things, right? Like deformed, distorted, uh, disfigured, poorly drawn, bad anatomy. That stuff is all really can save you a lot of time in having to filter all of these crappy images after that you really aren't going to use, especially if you're creating a larger collection. It takes a lot of time to go and filter out and really get nitpicky about all of the uh, all the little minute details but uh, a good series of negative prompts is gonna help save a lot of time after the fact if you're just doing onesie twosies it a negative prompts can make a big difference but it definitely gonna exponentially make a larger difference over a lot uh, uh, way more images if you're creating a whole collection but uh, just to caveat here making a whole collection and just doing the prompts uh, by U.S. by Europeans uh, standards, you, doing all this work is, uh, for, from what I've seen, that does give you copyright to have to drill down and cr and figure out all of your positive negative prompts and all of these different steps and all that kind of stuff. That does count for them. It does not in the states. Uh, or if you have U.S. customers you're selling to, you may not have copyright when you think you do. Um, but we can see the positive prompts anyway, negative prompts, and sampler. So they used a DPM++ SDE Keras, and we've got their model here, the revision animated one to one We went to a CFD scale of 7 and 30 steps. So more steps, think about it like you're baking it more. You want it to do more steps. You want it to dream it longer. Think about like dream time. That's how You want it to dream longer. Now, that it could be both good and bad. Um, 
you won't know uh, for what you're trying to create unless you just experiment with it. Next part. So those are some websites that I gave you to get some prompts, how to try to find an idea of different styles uh, that you like and where you can source some models. But that's not the only place. There are some people that I like to follow on Twitter or x.com that uh, got some really interesting styles and they share these props for free. And let's show you some of the really awesome stuff that I've seen online that you can take those, those styles of prompts and then you can work them into what you're doing. This is going to be, um, so to give you a little tip here, one of the things that I do is I got Telegram. Now, even you don't have to get Telegram just for other people. Telegram is great just for your own uses, like a hard drive online. I use Telegram to uh, save stuff about doctors over the last couple of years. <clears throat> I also use it to save different things on AI and uh, different AI templates and things like that. You can use it and create a Telegram channel that's just for you. You can also use it on your phone and on your PC to even transfer images and videos and that kind of thing just to yourself. And so sometimes maybe I'll see a website or something I want to save. I'll just uh, I'll just share it to myself in a Telegram channel. And that's what I've been doing with prompts and AI for like the last year or so. And so I've got a whole bunch of really cool stuff here that uh, I've saved that I'll show you. And you can um, then follow some of these people on Twitter and it will give you an idea where uh, you're going to get some new kind of stuff in your feed. If you are interested in creating AI art, uh, that is uh, just gives you an idea like there's a lot of people experimenting with this right now and there's some really cool stuff so let's look at some of that did you know you could make comic book art with AI yeah yeah you can really cool right so here's the prompt right here prompt number panel comic book page or wall art of a scene style art 2d raw style and here you go. Check this out. Here's some examples for you. Here's one where they kind of did Mario. And um, we'll look at, here's another one here. So here's some panel art. You could also, there's there's angles here where you could uh, make this stuff and make it available for sale and in different, uh, different websites. Uh, it could, you could create an NFT collection with it. There's, there's tons of different things that you can do. Uh, just limited by your imagination. Here's some other things that people created using this style of the panel art. Just beautiful. Really like it. And you just scroll down, you can get some, some other ideas of what people have made. This person is Mr. Allen, uh, Mr. Underscore Allen T. So you're going to see that some people are sharing styles of uh for or prompts for mid journey does that mean that you can't use them in stable diffusion heck no it doesn't give it a try see what happens <laughs> it's all about experimentation have fun with it uh, you'll be amazed with some of the cool stuff you can create so they're going to go uh this particular easy easy guide ai there's adjective lifts so we can look down here here is, you can add this to your prompt. Remember I was saying you can find specific things in a prompt and then try it out, see what happens. Okay, so here's some here. Hexagonal, octagonal, mirror, geomatic, abstract, surreal pattern. I'm just going to go down here and show you some of this stuff that, uh, that people have created using some of these. Here's adjectives, um, some other ones. So prompt, zoom, burst, and then we've got subject and setting period, long exposure shot, dynamic burst effect, motion and energy. And then you can use in, here is your point of view. Uh, we've got a bunch of different things here. Uh, yeah, t take notes. <laughs> Feel free to come back here and check this out again. Uh, get yourself like a little, uh, you want to get like a recipe book. I use Telegram for that, uh, which was where I can keep links to all these things, but uh, or a whiteboard or another note pad whatever you got to do to get your own kind of repertoire going and look at some of these aren't they beautiful and here's some uh using points of view so points of view makes a big difference right so um you don't want it says when to avoid so you're not going to use this point of view uh with still life or portrait photograph where the zoom burst effect can distract from the static details 
Um, it says uh, MJ is great for detail or blur, uh, but not yet for both. So here's here's some other things they use here. And we've got a prompt, which is smoke or fog overlays on the subject setting, which is in brackets. Um, and then here's some, some different ideas here. So smoky, mystery, ethereal, atmospheric, ghosty, dreamy, hazy, magical, obscure, and mood. <laughs> but look at this. Beautiful. Just uh, wild what you can create with the right prompts. We've got another one here. So we've got spooky pictures. Um, right, so it's got, it's got some things to do and not do with it. And, you know, that's, uh, I think that's it for this one. Let's look at some more. All right. Uh, cinematic shots formula, how to create beautiful cinematic images. Here is the formula. So we've got a cinematic scene from the year, movie, genre, movie, name, shot, type, scene, subject, action, captured by what kind of cameras being used film directed by pick your director the emotion the lighting and then you've got your ar uh your style and so we're gonna look down and let's see like he said here you can mess around with some of these uh these uh these templates this is in mid journey but i can't see why this wouldn't work for stable diffusion um so here is one right here we've got a resilience close-up shot just by a uh, handheld camera and we can look at some of these images really uh, neat now what would you use this for i'm not entirely sure but it exists here's another example here yeah cool stuff let's show you some more Here's another prompt, 18, uh, this is from Cake Droid, 1800s wet plate ambro type close up of the character, a location, sepia tone, grainy and imperfections. Check that out. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. We can see that uh, People tried some other prompts here. Oh, there's a DeLorean. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's fun. Feel free to mess around with any of this stuff. It's just hilarious. All right, we got another prompt here. Hyper detailed, epic, full body photo of a Marvel villain, and then you put in your uh, your prompt here. Got some really cool ones. Here's Doombringer. So this uses a description instead of prompts, and the description is how it uh, how it generates. We've got another one here where the Serafina. This description generates the image. Uh, Eclipse. This one's really cool. Here's a product photographer that's using AI to create product images for clients. This is a really cool use case. Uh, in this particular uh, thing, here's the prompt structure, the number of items, item, product description, the style, and the lighting. And uh, let's see if we've got any examples here. All right, so it looks like she deleted what it was, um, but uh, in essence, creating the background and then add the product to the image after as an in-paint. This particular idea, I think, has got some legs to make kids' coloring books available, uh, to create them, to sell them online. And uh, here's an idea here. Kids coloring book, an astronaut, planets, cartoon, thick lines, black and white, white background. And uh, we can see there's some examples here. You can add style, dash, dash, style, raw to the prompt um, in, in mid journey. Um, and then it's uh, it, it gives us some other ideas here. Now, you could, I can't see why you couldn't uh, tr try out and craft your own with stable diffusion to come up with coloring books and... Uh, yeah, it's super awesome. 
If you end up doing any of this or experimenting with it, let me know in the comments below. I hope you get some value out of this. I'll share a couple more with you and then I'll let you, let you go and we'll create another one, which will be number four. This one's got some cool t-shirt style art. So you got chibi, subject, action, cute, comet vector, illustration style t-shirt, minimalism, and raw. Here's uh, some examples that other people have created with it. For all you people who loves, love animals or cats or dogs or what have you in various types of human outfits, well, here's a, a specific type of prompt. So the theme is animal fashion photo shoot, and we've got our prompt here. Vogue magazine cover with the animal in a candid pose wearing clothes. Uh, you can describe the clothes, of course, half body uh, or full body photo shoot, magazine photo shoot, studio lighting, creative, trippy, aesthetic background and modern look. So uh, it says important, you know, you definitely want to put what kind of animal it is. Um, describe the clothes, right? So you definitely got to put some, what, what kind of look it is you're going for. Again, like I said, with the, um, with the, the that number uh, that you can you can tailor your number to go between like seven and you can you can make the when you're messing with stable diffusion you can make it match the prompt more or get more creative and that's going to change your results for sure but there's some <laughs> it's hilarious look at this one <laughs> right so here's the one that someone <laughs> did here for <laughs> the Vogue idea. Here's one with the lion, gorillas. Yeah, it's it's pretty neat. If you're still taking notes, I've got a bunch more because I'm also going to be referring back to this. I haven't gone over this stuff for a while, so it's good for me. I'll probably end up taking notes after the fact. So we've got some other things. So this is about visual balance, right? So we've got asymmetrical, asymmetrical, symmetrical, and radial. And here is an example of what they look like and radial. And this is uh, C-I-G-U-L-E-V-A. Tatiana, some really great examples there. Tatiana shared some more. These, these are fantastic. Different po color palettes, messing with different color palettes, right? So we got monochromatic, warm, cool, neutral, earth tone, vintage, pastel, and muted. Some different examples there of each. I don't know, but you, my grandma used to love collecting little glass figurines. And this is a prompt you can use to create your own. And here is the prompt here. And some examples. This came across my feed and I thought it was really awesome. Glow in the dark versus laser art. I didn't even know, well, I knew glow in the dark art was a thing, but I never even thought to put this in uh, in a style before. I can't wait to experiment with this myself. Check out how beautiful this is. Let's see, AI art. Here's another one. We've got the, uh, there's your laser art. If you add a fluores fluorescent and a pattern, you can get something like this. There's another laser art. Wow. If you wanted to uh, follow this person, you can definitely. It's a, uh, let's give you the, the, the Twitter and it's at retro underscore realm 88. 
here's how to create an emoji that looks like you. <laughs> so here is the prompt right here. And here's some great examples. And other people have tried them out as well. This guy described his wife. If you wanted to make your own card game, here's a prompt I found. Thank you, uh, Art D. Ingenio. I'll give you a follow. Here's the template. Uh, we can see what it looks like. If you're wondering what Zoom is and uh, AR, so AR is aspect ratio, and you got like 16 by 9, 21 by 9, people usually use a 1 to 1, and then um, from going for a vertical shot to a horizontal ratio, um, we've got some different examples here. So uh, this is more advanced, but this is um, how you can use aspect ratios to change things. Here's uh, a difference between AR21.9 to a zoom and how uh, someone has fixed black bars. Going from uh, a zoom 1.3 to 1.5. Here's some different people testing it out when, when generating. This is I am Newbird. Of course, he's talking about mid-journey. Does that mean you can't try it out on um, a stable diffusion? Absolutely not. Give it a go. This one, I cannot wait to try this today. Oh, ho, ho. We're, we're just about done. Thanks to all of you who have stuck in here this long, taking notes and stuff. Working with AI is so awesome. And some of the things that you can do. Here is one biometric hologram tattoo markup style the portrait of a subject polaroid shot glass core filter style raw shared by tech Hollow. let's give them a follow and here's some of the examples somebody else was experimenting wow isn't that beautiful? See, this person used Dream Shaper, Leonardo Dream Shaper. Let's see some more. Hope you got your notepad out. We got more from Tatiana. Definitely worth a follow. And we can see here they've got low light photography, twilight photography, golden hour, blue hour, studio, daylight, natural, and neon. We can, we can definitely see the differences here. Uh, of course, I love my neon, my glowies, and my shinies. We've got prompt, uh, promptly AI that uh, definitely shared some more. So candle lighting, dynamic, cool, glow stick, cozy, cinematic, moody, volumetric, backlit, sunny, overcast, moonlit, dusk, and dawn. Of course, we've got poses too, right? What kind of pose do you want uh, the person to have? So we've got dance, dramatic, sport, catalog, headshot, candid, profile, high fashion. Here's some examples for you. Different aesthetics, holographic, iridescent, vaporwave, cyberpunk, and meme. Gotta love me, my cyberpunk. This style is a prompt builder to help you build prompts, too. It's called uh, promptomania.com. 
some basic color palettes, monochromatic, warm, cool, neutral, earth tone, vintage, pastel, and muted. Paper art. <laughs> paper art. So here is your prompt for paper art. Imagine a paper art work of an object, city, or animal in a style of vibrant illustrations. Style raw. Here is some of the examples. Manga portraits, inked lines and dramatic expressions. So this is a proper prompter. We'll give them a follow. So here's the prompt. Your subject portrait, isolated, manga style, flat 2D, dramatic shading, bold outlines, white background, black and white style in raw and 16 by 9 format. This one, I definitely got to try this one out as well. It's called the lightning wave. Now, I'm not sure what that means but it does seem to make things cool and lightning. <laughs> Here's your prompt right here. Check out that output. Woo. Lightning wave. Chalk drawing, negative space, luminescent details, UV reactive material background. Another prompt share, close-up portrait photography of a hooded woman, dark narratives, colorful costumes, matte photo, shot on Lomo 800. Now, we haven't, I haven't shown you that prompt yet. I might have to do that in the next video. But there are prompts for selecting certain styles of cameras and lenses and how that changes things. Uh, but we've got some different examples of that particular prompt here. And I'd have to say it looks fantastic. If you're into the comic book style, I know we already covered another way to do that. Here is uh, another uh, way to get some variation in style. So we've got comics, comic strip, panels, comic panels, comic book, cartoon, web comics, concept art, cover art, Franco-Belgian comic, graphic novel, and manga. And they're all different. A fractured mirror shard prompt. Conceptual self uh, portrait with mirror shards collaged on the face. Fragmented reflection, surreal imagery, mixed media photography. There's so much more that you can do. We talked about comics. We talked about different styles, different cameras, different ways to structure prompts. And then we didn't even get into different locations. There's so many different locations. Really, the limit is your imagination. And there's also some summaries for, for loca different locations that you, can, that you can select and really help flesh out to create exactly what you want. P pro and this is... The, all of doing doing all of this is kind of what would go into prompt engineering. Now it's not like real engineering; it's more like prompt creation or prompt structure and and how to do it. Work with it some more. I'd love to see what some of you come up with. And uh, thank you for being here, Josh Silek. Out. Stay tuned for another video. Uh, can't wait to make it for you. And of course, I've got my weekly update later on. But uh, I'll be posting that as soon as possible. Have fun. AI is just amazing to work with. And there's new stuff coming out all the, all the time. And it gets better and better. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens next. Josh. Psylocke. Signing out. <laughs> Take care.